Good, how are you? Okay, this one's going to be a little tougher tonight. Um, this is, uh, I haven't seen Tony. Have you seen Tony? I would hope he would be here, but I don't. Yeah, Tony Johnson. But uh, it's 6.30, so we're going to get rolling. Uh, this will not be a typical uh, council meeting, I would imagine. We will, um, we will be changing things as we go, and as we come to each section, I will, um, I will tell you how we're going to change that particular section. Um, the first part we will do normally. Uh, I'll call the meeting to order, and we'll make sure that everybody's here, and uh, then we'll move on. Do either one of you want to do the proclamation for Ben Cordova? Yeah, I have a check for him, too, so I would like to do it, too. As a donation form right now. Do you two want to split it, and then I'll move over and you pull, and you, who wants to start? you want to start it? Sure. And you'll start it when we get that and then have her finish it, but I have not seen him, but that doesn't mean he's not going to be here. So, okay, uh, City Council meeting for November 7th, 2011 will now come to order. Remember, times indicated uh, next to agenda items are approximate start times only. Uh, turn off all cell phones for the duration, and will the city clerk please call the roll. Natal. Uh, here. Snyder. Here. Buttons, please. You know, even on our last day, we can't remember that. Moreno. Here. Benson. Here. Carson. Present. Teeter. Here. Diaz. Here. McElthowney. Here. Bullock. Here. Mr. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you very much. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. And... Uh, what I would like to do is we have an employee um, at, at our city who uh, has become very ill, and um, I'm, I don't want to release uh, their name, but if we could just keep this employee in all of our prayers. And also, yeah, and, I'll, let me, and then I'll get to each of you. Also, uh, Robert Taves' mom's funeral will be this Saturday and information to follow. Ms. Teeter? Uh, yes. Also, I would like everyone to have in their thoughts and prayers um, Lance Grady. He's the grandson of a former council member at large, um, Mr. Grady. We called him Toad. And so if you can remember him in your thoughts and prayers this evening, he's nearly, uh, within a week, he went from a healthy Adams County employee, 35 years old, 
and he's just living minute by minute now with acute leukemia. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem Snyder. Yes, and also if we could keep the family of Tom Martin in our thoughts and prayers. Um, the services for him will be tomorrow at 1 o'clock at the Aspen Mortuary. Thanks. Okay. So I can get the audience to stand for a moment of silence, and then we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I need you to, I need you to, to make, I'm going to make, we need to make a motion to remove uh, Resolution 2011-71. Okay, uh, the next, what I'd like to do is get a motion to amend our agenda to continue Resolution 2011-71. Um, Ms. Snyder, or Mayor Pro Tem Snyder. Yes, move to continue Resolution 2011-71. Council is seated. Ms. Teeter. Second the motion. Okay, I have a motion and a second to amend the agenda to continue Resolution 2011-71 to a future date. Um, any discussion? Okay. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, the same. Motion passes. This time, will staff pass around the microphones for introductions? Doug Haug. Janice Haug with Haug Transportation. Leah Garcia. Name. Giovanni. Kathy Natal. Trinity Natal. Sophia Natal and Adam Natal. Sebastian Natal. Victoria Natal. Nancy Styler. Bob Zauer. Mac McPerlin. Danny Thomas. Betty Thomas. Pam Spratler. Glenn Haug. Shirley Curlis. Erica Dixon. Sarah Martinez. Thomas Martinez. Thomas Martinez. Because I'm not sure he's here. I don't think so. Maria Gonzalez. Crystal Elliott. Larry Quintana. Guillermo Serna. Joe Archuleta with One Community. Christy Joplin Martin. Steve Douglas. Christy Douglas. Ian Rancher. Derek Richter with the Fraternal Order of Police. But there's one that's not. Sylvia Hevelman with Ask Me. So I'll do that one. Michelle Hill, Economic Development. Robert Taves. Leanne Noel, Grand Administrator. Carolyn Keith, Parks and Recreation. Karen O'Donnell, Parks and Recreation. Greg Clements, Public Works. John Howard, Information Technology. Dustin McIntyre. Mike Griffin. Ian Hyde with the State of Colorado. Perry Edmund, Public Works. Rod Middleton. Lindell Middleton. Grace Hollebeck. Eric Hollebeck with Shrimmage. Michelle Rogers, City Manager's Office. David Foster. Mike Norman. <laughs> Natasha Snyder, <laughs> Draven, and Isaiah. Joseph Horton. Darla Hamilton. Carol Snyder. Elwood Snyder. Michelle Halstead, Communications. There is Sally Hinton. Kim Madsen. Bill Waterman. Good 
Tanya Simpson. Tracy Danil. Ms. Ryan Cordero, Government Relations. Jim Hayes, Community Development. Phil Baca, Chief of Police. Brittany Morris Saunders, Director of Economic Development. Christy Maroney. Did we get everybody? I think so. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda um, is proclamations. The first proclamation tonight is City Council and staff would like to recognize Mr. Ben Cordova and his foundation for the work they do to raise awareness of and provide services for our nation's veterans. I didn't see Mr. Cordova. Is he here tonight? Okay, I don't see him. What we're going to do is, is read the resolution, and then if staff would make sure that they get that to him, I'd sure appreciate it. Uh, Ms. Teeter's going to start it, and Ms. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Snyder's going to finish it. You could do it from up here, Kath, if you want. Oh, up here? Yeah, because he's not here. Oh. So. Whereas Ben Cord Cordova, a longtime Commerce City business leader, is a passionate and tireless advocate for veterans' rights, and whereas Mr. Cord Cordova, in an honorably discharged U.S. Army Vietnam veteran with nine years of active military service, and whereas he understands the issues facing veterans returning from military service as he suffers from health issues related to chemical exposure in Vietnam and... Okay, we're just out. She starts from here. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And whereas Mr. Cordova created the Ben Cordova Foundation dedicated to help U.S. veterans, their families, and active military personnel by providing free lawyers, educational assistance, and other services free of charge, and whereas Mr. Cordova completed a 344-mile walk across Colorado in 44 days to raise awareness and support for his foundation, despite being limited to a 10 to 11 mile of walking day due to his diabetes and neuropathy, and whereas Mr. Cordova will begin a 2,745-mile journey across the country next February, traveling through 10 states and ending in Washington, D.C., to raise $10 million for veteran services. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Paul Natal and the City of Commerce City hereby recognize Ben Cordova in his foundation's work to raise awareness of provi and provide services for our nation's veterans. Thank you. Okay, I'll now entertain a motion to approve the proclamation. Ms. Teeter? Yes, move. <laughs> move approval of the proclamation in support of Mr. Ben Cordova's foundation to raise funds for veterans. Okay, Ms. Snyder? Second the motion. I have a motion and a second to approve the proclamation. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, request a voice vote, please. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same. Motion passes. If if staff would take care of making sure they get that to Mr. Cordova. Next, City Council and staff would like to recognize the Commerce City One Community Board and present them with a plaque. Would City Manager Flannery invite staff to come forward and begin the presentation? I'd like to ask uh, Intergovernmental Relations um, Manager Ms. Ryan Cordero to introduce the group. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Mayor and members of Council. For the last five years, the One Community Board received grant fundings from the Colorado Trust to promote a unified community through immigrant integration. Through this grant, in a partnership with Commerce City as its fiscal agent, One Community was able to provide a resource and referral program, implement a volunteer mediation program, promote unity within the community, establish uh, an annual 5K race in Commerce City, and positively influence existing community events to be more welcoming to the immigrant community. When one community established in 2007, the Colorado Trust had a strong initiative to focus on immigrant integration. The Trust's research suggested that when people migrated to a community, they faced significant hurdles 
such as access, ac accessing health care, navigating a new school system, and communicating with neighbors. Since then, the Colorado Trust has, shif has shifted its focus to health care. In lieu of the end of this great initiative, the City of Commerce City would like to recognize all those involved for their contributions, which are consistent with the City's motto of building a quality community for a lifetime through programs that promote unity and the strength that exists in our diversity. In a minute, I will invite to the podium Mr. Joe Archuleta, who serves as the, as the president of the One Community Board, to say some words. After Mr. Archuleta speaks, I will return to the podium to invite each of the current members of the One Community Board to receive a certificate of recognition and to take a picture with council. Mm -hmm. And now I would like to invo uh, invite up Mr. Joe Archuleta. Okay, thank you. Good evening, sir. Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the City Council, and friends and family of Commerce City. Um, someone once said before that it takes um, an overnight success about 20 years to happen. <laughs> and that's the truth. And we started this initiative in 2007. It has been uh, because of the labor and because of the work of, of various citizens of this community and of this city. Um, and I think we've um, come to the point where we have um, had a lot of victories. We've had a lot of small victories, a lot of large victories. Uh, but some things have happened to change Commerce City and to change the outlook of Commerce City. I'd like to begin to personally um, uh, thank the board members uh, of this board. Uh, and there's some others that I would like to thank, also the, the former board members uh, as they began. I, I came here about uh, two years ago, halfway through the grant, and became the chair of the board. And I've really learned from all these people. They have taught me some valuable lessons. And, and every time I meet with them, I'm just amazed at what little I know, but uh, how much they know and how much they have uh, carried me through this position. Um, I'd also like to... Um, personally thank Larry Quintana and Guillermo Serna for their passion and for their fire. It has been very valuable to this board and they have uh, made it fun and they have also made it a real challenge and a work uh, but with a lot of passion and with a lot of fire. I'd like to also thank Maria Gonzalez for her professionalism on the board and for her gifting in that area. Uh, a good friend, Chris, Christy Joplin Martin, okay, and her board from uh, Community Enterprise, and her stick to itiveness, and uh, just for being a bridge builder uh, in this whole process. I'd also like to uh, thank personally Mr. Mizraim Cordero, who has been a guidance and a help and a true friend in every issue and every aspect of this uh, grant. Chief Baca, of course with his support and his participation and his professionalism. And also there's uh, another person that has come alongside with us uh, that has been sent to kind of coordinate uh, the whole uh, issue and the whole uh, grant, and that's uh, Gurudev Khalsa. And I don't know if he's here, but he's always kept us on task, and he's always uh, uh, led us through the hard times and, and given us a lot of advice. Um, and lastly, but not leastly, I'd like to uh, thank the uh, City of Commerce City for being the fiscal agent for this grant uh, that helped so many people uh, along the way, and also uh, for giving us in-kind support uh, and letting us and allowing us to use the Derby Resource Center uh, as a place where we can meet, as a place where uh, people from all kinds of places can gather together and come and find resources. And for their uh, achievement in integrating uh, the city of Commerce City. Thank you very much to all these people. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, board members. Okay. Now I would like to call up um, Mr. Guillermo Serna.
Mr. Larry Quintana. <laughs> Chief of Police, Phil Baca. <laughs> Christy Joplin Martin. <laughs> Ms. Maria Gonzalez. <laughs> George Toledo. Uh, and Mr. Mayor, members of council, I, I would just like to mention a few uh, of the previous board members that are not uh, here today uh, but contributed to the board. Uh, Justin Lampe, Ms. Joy Bishop, Mr. Jaime De Paolo, Mr. Phil Salazar, Ms. Cindy Hagerman, Ms. Mary Loretta, Officer Chuck Sonnier, uh, Mr. Thomas Feeney, and Ms. Merrick Weaver. Thank you. Could we have council come down for a big group photo? Thank you. probably comes as no surprise to anybody that uh, this council has uh, worked through probably the four most difficult economic times that most all of us can remember, even myself and Mr. Gaylor. Um, <laughs> tonight we'd like to present certificates to a number of our Commerce City businesses that even in these tough times have continued to grow and thrive, uh, which is really exciting. It really shows that, that our city is doing well and that we've got what it takes to mm -hmm. continue on this path. Um, we in the city, the council, and everybody here at the city appreciates everything these, these companies have done, and we really want to thank them for being here uh, and choosing to do business here in Commerce City. This presentation is to recognize those accomplishments. Would City Manager Flannery please invite staff to come forward to say a few words? Yes, sir. I'd like to bring uh, Economic Development Director Brittany Morris to the uh, podium. There's Tony. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council, Brittany Morris Saunders, Director of Economic Development, and I am pleased to present to you tonight a number of businesses that have been recognized recently by their peers. Here's how tonight is going to work. I'm going to briefly talk about each business and their accomplishment and their recognition. They will come up here and say a couple of words, and then at the end we'll do one large group picture with all of the businesses and you. And with that, I will start with Schlumberger. Schlumberger was recently recognized by Forbes magazine as one of the world's most innovative companies. Pathfinder, a Schlumberger com company, operates locally at 9251 East 104th Avenue. Pathfinder is a Schlumberger company that provides measurements and logging while drilling, delivering real-time data while drilling at transmission rates quadruple the industry standard. Sorry, I'm a little close to the mic. 
Eric Hollebeck, Operations Support Manager, North American Land, and Rod Middleton, Western Region Manager, Rocky Mountain Basin, are here with us tonight to accept this recognition. Please welcome them to the mic. And if Rob wants to say a few words. Mayor, City Council, thank you very much. We certainly appreciate your support. Since we moved to Commerce City, we certainly appreciate it. We couldn't have done it without your assistance. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Next, we have Goldilocks Balloons. Located at 4915 Niagara Street, this wholesale, wholesale distributor of balloons and accessories has experienced rapid growth during their six year, years of operation in the city. The business is owned by Sarah Valdez Martinez, who employs 20 people. This year, Goldilocks again ranked 45 of the top 50 minority-owned businesses. The company has received a number of past honors, including top 100 women-owned companies. Sarah Val Valdez Martinez and her husband and vice president, Tom Martinez, are here with us tonight to accept this recognition. If they could come up to receive their award. Thank you. I would like to thank you for this award. It's a great honor to work in the city of Commerce City. We're very pleased to be a part of the city. We, uh, we employ a lot of Commerce City citizens and we hope to employ more. Thank you very much. Next, we have Burko Corporation. This third generation family company is celebrating almost 60 years of protecting the food chain. The company is headquartered in Commerce City at 9152 Yosemite Street and manufactures more than 250 cleaning, sanitation, and production process chemicals and solutions used in the food industry. Many Burko, Burko formulations are on the USDA National Organic Program list of allowed products for use by organic processors. This year, Burko received four special designations, Colorado's Company to Watch, and three designations from Colorado Biz Magazine. Top Company Finalist, Top 100 Women-Owned Companies, Ranked 10th, and Top 250 Private Companies. This is not a surprise, considering that Kelly Green, Vice President of Business Development for the company, was also identified by Colorado Biz Magazine as one of Colorado's top 25 young professionals for 2011. Kelly is here with us tonight. Will you please come forward to accept your award? Thank you. Mayor, Council, thank you very much. Uh, really appreciate this award. Actually, my, uh, my grandparents started the business almost 60 years ago, so I'm truly honored to uh, be part of Commerce City and, and take this third generation company into the next generation and continue to employ uh, some great folks here in, in Commerce City and throughout the, the Denver Chamber, Denver area. Um, and we're just really fortunate to be able to manufacture and produce manufacturing jobs in which uh, obviously not only Colorado needs, but this whole country needs to, to produce jobs and keep moving forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have Douglas Colony Group. Doug Douglas Colony Group is another Commerce City company identified by Colorado Biz Magazine as being among the top 250 private companies in Colorado based on annual gross revenue. Since its founding in 1947, Douglas Roofing established itself as the Rocky Mountain region's premier full-service commercial, industrial, and steep roofing contractor. In 2009, Douglas Roofing joined with Colony Metal, a full-service architectural metal systems company, to provide innovative solutions and unparalleled seamless services at Douglas Colony Group, Inc. Located at 5901 East 58th Avenue, Douglas Colony Group is the largest commercial roofing contractor in Colorado and specializes in commercial roofing, metal, solar, and waterproofing services nationwide. 
Christy Maroney, Marketing Director, is here with us tonight to accept their award. Thank you. Mayor, City Council, we just want to say thank you so much for the not only award today, but your continuous support. Um, you were there for our ribbon cutting ceremony and so much more, and we really appreciate all your support through over the years. And uh, we're proud to call uh, Commerce City our home, and we hope to for many more years to come. So thank you very much for the award. Next is Alpine Waste and Recycling, another Commerce City top 250 private companies in Colorado. We had quite a few this year is Alpine Waste and Recycling. Alpine Waste and Recycling has received numerous honors over the last few years, and we honor them again tonight. The company has consistently been recognized as one of Colorado's fastest growing private companies and has become the largest fully integrated independent waste and recycling company in Colorado. The company offers every type of non-hazardous solid waste collection service available, including recycling, commercial garbage disposal, and commercial combustible waste collection. Alpine has been rapidly growing for 12 years and has 180 employees. The company is located at 7575 East 84th Avenue. John Griffith, president of Alpine Waste, is here with us tonight to accept this award. Please come up. I just want to say thank you. We've been a uh, a uh, resident of Commerce City for about a decade now, and we couldn't be happier than we are here. It's, it's very refreshing to be located somewhere where business is embraced and supported, mm -hmm. and certainly we've received both those from, from the City Council and, and the government here, and we're very grateful. Thank you very much. And last but not least, we have Haug Special Services. How Special Services was honored with two designations by Colorado Biz Magazine this year. Top 100 women-owned companies and top 250 private companies. Both distinctions are based on gross business revenue. The company, owned by Janice Haug, is a 100% women-owned business, family-operated, and managed for the past 25 years. The founder, Doug Haug, who's in our audience today, instilled in his children that never saying no to customers is the only way to be successful in any business. Therefore, the Haug family and team take great pride in providing the highest level of service to all customers through providing a solution for any needs their customers require. This growing transportation and logistics company has done business in Commerce City for 13 years. Haug has 100 employees and is located at 5333 East 58th Avenue. This year, Haug ranked six on the list of top 100 women-owned companies in Colorado. Janice Haug, CEO of Haug Special Services, is here with tonight, and if she would come up to accept her award. Thank you. Mayor, Council, um, I'm honored and flattered, and since moving to Commerce City, so welcoming to work with people in the council and, and on the committee to help our business grow and flourish. Like I say, uh, the saying is, it, it truly does take a village to raise a good company. And it's all the people in this room that have made us successful. So thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you to all of our businesses. And I would love to have council come down and our businesses come up and we'll have one big group photo. Thank you.
Okay, just for the audience's information, um, we did move one of the items on the agenda tonight, which was Resolution 2011-71, and it was a resolution approving adoption of some employee policies. Um, but it'll be moved to a, a later date, just so everybody knows. Um, the next part of our agenda, and before I do that, um, I would like to recognize Tony Johnson in the back of the room. Tony's uh, been on council for a while. And uh, I'm glad to see him here. Uh, we, we lost Tony for a little while because he moved to another city and, and uh, he was missed. And uh, I'm glad to see him here tonight so that we can recognize you later tonight. And I see you have your family here and welcome to all of them. Um, what we're going to do now in citizen communication is this is this part where we're going to allow the audience to come down and say a few words about the outgoing council if they see that that's what they would like to do. Going down the list, I noticed that there is one person here, um, or I guess two people that have signed up to talk about something that we have since moved. Is there still a need for these? Um, it looks like maybe Derek and Sylvia, do you still have a need to talk tonight or can that move to some time when that's going to be an actual topic on our agenda? Are they even here anymore? Do you have a need to come down and talk today even though we've moved this? We're not going to be talking about it at all today. Is that okay? Okay. Appreciate you coming. Um, I'm just going to start through the list. And uh, if there's people when we get to the bottom of the list that want to say something, they'll be able to come up also. Uh, I'm going to limit everybody to, what, 14 seconds? <laughs> no, we're going to waive the three minutes um, as long as you all promise that we're not going to be here um, for a long time. But feel free to just brag about anybody you want to. Um, and I'll go down. I'm going to start through the list first since there are the, there's people who did, in fact, sign up. First one, and it's wonderful to see all of these people on the list. Uh, Shirley Curlis. Shirley, you have definitely been one of the good ones. Do Mr. Gaylor, do we? They could just. Do we need to do addresses and stuff tonight? Is there a need for that? The only benefit of having that is then it can be in the minutes. Okay, so that's fine. there is a benefit. Okay, to then that. then we'll do that. Names and addresses for the record, and then you have whatever you need to say. Mayor and City Council, I'm Shirley Curlis, 5721 East 67th Avenue. And I just wanted to say thank you, council members that are leaving us. You will be missed. Kathy Teeter, I especially want to thank for all the wonderful things she's helped me with. And uh, Tracy Snyder also has been a big help. And uh, I admire the women that are in uh, city council and in government. I come from an age where a woman was supposed to wear her apron and stay at home. Unfortunately, I was not one that did this. And I know what, it, <laughs> I know what it's like to uh, buck heads with these boys. <laughs> and I say boys because of my age, I can do that. <laughs> thank you very much for everything that you have done for us. Okay, thank you. Here's somebody we don't see all the time. Yeah. Bob Zeiler, please come forward. Good evening, sir. And your better half is here also. Hello, Nancy. Yeah. Bob Zeiler, <laughs> 6321 Pontiac, Commerce City. I'd uh, like to say a couple of words about some of the council people that are uh, leaving us here. It's uh, really sad to see some of them go. Uh, I've lived here in Commerce City since. 1956, 50-something 50 odd years, I've seen a lot of council people come and go, good ones, extra good ones, and all that sort of thing. But in my eyes, there's only one that outstands above all of them, and that's Kathy Teeter. No matter what the council did, 
If Kathy didn't approve of it, she still worked with it and uh, got a lot of things completed in Commerce City. Uh, and I'm sure that if any citizen called Kathy for any reason whatsoever, whether they needed personal help or whether they needed help with something with the city, Kathy was there. And it's uh, uh, something that I, again, say, Kathy, you will be missed by everybody. And uh, then again, uh, uh, Mayor Paul Natal is leaving us uh, due to term limits and stuff like that. And uh, he spent time as our council person and time as a mayor. Uh, a lot of good things were accomplished uh, in our city during the time of his tenure here. There was a, a time, well, practically all the time that he was mayor, that he was under the threat of being recalled. Each and every time it failed. That must tell you something about Paul, that these people couldn't get the job done as much as they'd like to. Paul, thank you very much, and I do hope that maybe next election you will consider being a candidate again for city uh, council or mayor. Thank you, and, and that's it. Thank you, sir. Elwood Snyder. Good evening, sir. Yes, best dad in the world, I've been told. Mayor, City Council, uh, I have property at 5991 Newport Street where my daughter lives. My wife and I currently reside in Gilpin County at 10802 Highway 119. And I'm here personally to thank uh, Tracy Snyder for your dedication to Commerce City and and to the people who live here. Mom and I are very proud of you for the things that you have done in the eight years that you've been on city council. You have cared for the seniors of Commerce City and for the others in a wonderful way. Uh, we love you very much and we support you in the future in, in whatever endeavor you take on. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, I'm sitting here going, okay, which one of them is going to cry first? <laughs> and if you start, you're going to start me. Next person, Bill Waterman. Evening, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bill Waterman. I reside at 2604 Southeast 39th Street, Moore, Oklahoma, and I'm here to speak on behalf of Kathy Teeter. I met Kathy uh, almost eight years ago in Nashville, Tennessee at a conference there, and a number of you were there at the time. I was impressed, first of all, by her beauty, and then secondly, as she's waving her finger in my face, defending her city and her state, I came to understand her passion. She has done a lot in her time on the city council. She's displayed integrity, self-control, patience, Patience in dealing with all the citizens, all the calls that she receives, and all the messages that she returns time and time again. She's a very humble person, and she's a very tolerant person, and I know that part because it pertains specifically to me. She has done a lot for this city, and I know that she'll be missed by the citizens and by the staff here. And if you don't do your job right, I'll send her back. <laughs> but for now, she's my wife, and I'd like to keep her for a while. Thank you very much. Thank 
Tracy Donnell. Good evening. Hi, I'm Tracy Donnell. Um, my address is 10674 Bell Creek Boulevard. Tonight, I would like to take this time to, to thank Mrs. Kathy Teeter for all she's done on the City Council for the last eight years. Not only have you been a great leader, but also my role model, and most important, my mom. Thank you, Mom. I'm very, very proud of you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, how come no one's come to that mic yet and cried? I'm waiting. Uh, next person, Natasha Donham. You didn't have to bring me flowers. I know. <laughs> Look at the smiles. <laughs> Natasha Denham, I live at 7381 Quebec Street. This is Isaiah. You want to say hi? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say thank you to my mom for everything that she has done. She has shown me not only what a woman can do, but also what a mother can do and can be. I'm very proud of her for everything that she's done and everything that she's shown me I can be. They know. <laughs> they are. Next is Darla Hamilton. I hope nobody's got allergies. <laughs> Hello, my name is Darla Hamilton, and I reside at 3351 East 120th Avenue, Thornton, Colorado, 80233. I had to write this down. <laughs> um, Councilwoman Tracy, you have done an outstanding job serving our community. Our hometown has gone through so many changes since you've been in office. And I personally want to say thank you for all you've done. And I look forward to seeing you in political career later. Specifically, House District 32. Next person, Kim Madsen. Good evening. My name is Kim Madsen, and my address is 17061 East 107th Avenue. Um, I wanted to come tonight and personally thank um, Mayor Natal, Council, Council Member Snyder, Teeter Diaz, and former Council Member Johnson. Um, it's been my pleasure getting to know all of you, and I wanted to thank you so much for your dedication and hard work. Um, you guys have definitely set a high standard um, for the new council coming in, and uh, they have a lot to live up to, so thank you so much. Um, I also wanted to thank Kathy Teeter um, for, the, for her time and commitment to the community and the city. Again, it's been my pleasure to serve with her the past several years on the Liquor Board. Kathy has demonstrated how much she truly loves Commerce City. Her dedication has encouraged me to challenge myself. Kathy's commitment has inspired me, and I am fortunate to be able to call her my friend. While I am sure that her husband, Bill, is excited to spend more time with her, um, I hope he doesn't pack up her things too quickly, because I know that she will certainly continue her involvement with the city. Kathy, I wish you lots of luck in your next endeavor. And I'm going to have to apologize because um, I'm sure it's my getting older eyesight, but I'm not quite able to make out the next name. And it may be Averly. 
Araceli, I'm sorry. It's exactly how it looks. <laughs> Hi, it's Araceli Hinton. I reside at 17022 Parkside Drive. And I just wanted to, again, commend uh, Mayor and the outgoing members. A great job. I'm, uh, my husband and I have lived here for six years, and we really appreciate what you've done for the city. And hopefully the people that are coming in now to serve will continue to do a great job. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next person is Robert Taves. Evening, sir. Good evening, Mayor Cattell, members of council. My name is Robert Taves. I live at 7120 East 66th Place here in Commerce City. My biggest thing is, and the only reason why I'm up here is to tell every one of you, thank you. I've worked for, with you guys for many years. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Tracy Snyder, I've worked with you. You know, Kathy Peter, I've worked with you on many different things. Thank you, guys. You know, Bob here recently, you know, thank you. Uh, you've been kind of a little inspiration to me, going ahead and getting up there running since you've been up there. Mr. Bullock, you know, you've been an inspiration to me, getting up there running and, and going. Four years ago, five years ago, when we ran against each other, it's been a real inspiration. The city means a lot to me. You know, J.D., I didn't really get to meet you too well. Uh, Mr. Marino, I didn't get to meet you that well. Mr. Benson? Again, there, there's been many times we even butted heads on a few things, but you've been a good inspiration for me out here on this council. So, all of you. Mr. T Natel, you've been the main one that I got to really say thank you to. Over these last five years, you know, I've had a lot of questions about the city and a lot of things that concerned me, and you are always prompt on, you know, getting back to me of what, what, which department to talk to and which way to go on it, you know. And I want to go ahead and get in here and continue working with the new council, and I still want to keep in touch with all my friends that are still here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward? Okay, Mr. Foster, it's good to see you. I've missed you, sir. Good. You just haven't been around as much in the last little bit. That's the way it goes. But um, <laughs> a couple of things. First is, uh, Paulo, I just want you to know that uh, you know, you, you've got such a terrific future. And uh, don't be kind of discouraged by this race. You know, keep your head up. I, I think there are a lot of people who will, will gain from you. And, and I'm really happy Tony's in the back, um, snuck in here, because you know, what I have uh, to read really pertains to you as well, Tony. So notwithstanding the fact that I usually speak um, uh, extemporaneously, I actually wrote down uh, my thoughts tonight. And, uh, and I did notice that the mayor is the only one without a tie, uh, including Tony Johnson, which is somewhat um, discouraging. But dear Paul, Tracy, Kathy, and Tony, I write this letter with a significant amount of sadness. In my business, I come across a lot of public officials. Many of the public officials representing cities and counties serve out, serve out of a sense of public service, of giving back. In my faith, we have a term, tikkun olam, or repairing the world. It is precisely this act of repairing the world that, in my humble estimation, is the link that joins the four of you. I know that each of you takes an oath upon entering office. That oath is your sacred bond to the people of your community that you will place the city and its inhabitants above all other issues. Each of you has shown time and time again that you place the people of Commerce City above all else. Each of you has demonstrated throughout all of your years of service that you are not willing, nor should you, compromise on the future of Commerce City. The pride that you have for your community is magnificent. You are each, in your own way, one of a kind. There will never be another Paul Natal, Tracy Snyder, Kathy Teeter, or Tony Johnson. Each of you showed such tenacity in finding the moral high ground as it related to any issue. Of course, you had your distractors along the way. That's leadership. 
Leadership is not doing the easy thing. It's doing the right thing. This world does not need any more people taking the easy way out or trying to win the easy way. You made decisions that were gut-wrenching. Some decisions required you to choose between multiple good answers and good people. But at the end of the day, you had to take a final stand. Each of you was willing to stand behind the votes you cast, and that's leadership. And each of you, in your own way, was practical, trying to find real solutions to the issues facing Commerce, cities, Commerce City. You made tough decisions in an effort to make life better for the future of your city. Voltaire is quoted as saying, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. The practical application that each of you brought to your life as a public servant is captured by Voltaire. Tough decisions are made every week by City Council. The four of you recognize that a good solution is always better than the hope or the glimmer of a perfect solution. Commerce City is better because of your service. Finally, each of you impacted me in a personal and profound way. I learned many lessons from the, the four of you. Leadership, compassion, integrity, and loyalty are four qualities that each of you possess. I am a better person for having had the opportunity to witness each of you living these important values. Our world needs more people like the four of you. Thank you for your friendship and for your service. All my best. Evening, sir. Good evening. Mayor, members of the council, uh, I uh, didn't know we were going to be able to have some words tonight, but I came totally unprepared, so I will speak. What was that word? Extra, whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to say, uh, it goes without saying, of course, that uh, giving your time and effort and lives to public service, uh, you, know, you just can't find words to, to describe how much of a sacrifice uh, that is for each one of you. And I know that uh, Tracy and Kathy, Paolo, Tony back there, and of course, um, Mary Natal, you have all given to our community. Uh, you're given the time uh, away from your families, many other things that perhaps you wish or desire to do for the, for the extended family of Commerce City. And I want to thank you. Uh, I forgot to mention that uh, I live at 7780 Magnolia Street, which actually is not part of Commerce City. We are surrounded by Commerce City, and one of the reasons I had to come up here was to thank uh, Mayor Natale because uh, during the time that he's been mayor, whenever there were issues in our enclave, uh, he was there to uh, uh, listen to our concerns, him as well as a uh, uh, former council person, Reba Droder. And they sat with us in many meetings and, and uh, listened to our concerns, and I believe they brought those concerns to the city in general. I want to thank uh, uh, Mary Natale for, for that effort. Uh, I think it was maybe going beyond the call of duty in that case. I also want to thank uh, uh, Mary Natale because uh, I think it was six years ago. Oh, incidentally, uh, Mary Natale and I didn't always agree on everything. But we always were able to walk away shaking hands and, and uh, I think with the uh, utmost respect for each other. Uh, but six years ago, uh, uh, the mayor and I were having a conversation and he was concerned that in our community we did not have any uh, Hispanics on any boards or council or what have you. And uh, that concern kind of lit a fire under me and I went out and started uh, a campaign. And of course, as a result of this election, uh, we've been able to change many of those things so that we can work in partnership with the, uh, uh, with the other members of the community here in Commerce City. Because as uh, we uh, stated earlier, we are one community. We are one big family, and we need to work together to take this here city further than it has gone. I want to thank you all, and I appreciate the service you've done for our city. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Maria. Hello, Mayor and City Council. I'm Maria Gonzalez, 7140 Ivy Street, Commerce City. Very proud resident of Commerce City. I uh, just want to thank you very much, uh, Mayor and outgoing members, for your continued support that you've done to our uh, community enterprise nonprofit for our one community access housing. So many other boards that I've served on that you've been truly um, supportive of in-kind donations and uh, 
being present and uh, supporting every single opportunity that you've had as an individual or as a city council member. I really appreciate that, and I really look forward to continue to see you at all of our events that we do because those continue to bond you with the community that you served and that I know that you'll be around to continue to serve in different ways. Uh, thank you very much. It's really an honor to, you know, have been working with you in different projects. And, um, you know, not everybody has made the time and commitment to sit in those chairs and take the criticism or constructive criticism and many times for doing things one way or the other. Uh, it takes true leaders to stay behind those chairs and make decisions that impact our community for a better future. Uh, I, I truly have seen that you believe in the one quality community for a lifetime, lifetime for everyone. And um, thank you very much for the support again. I look forward to working with you. And this serves as a formal invitation to our Derby Winter Festival, December 9th. It's a great event. It continues to grow. And I look forward to seeing you there and have a good time with all of your families and uh, our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Evening. My name is Tanya Simpson. I live at 5335 South Valencia Way. That's in Greenwood Village. Um, I was actually born and raised in Commerce City, and Kathy Teeter is my mother. I just wanted to come up and tell her thank you for being such a wonderful mom. Um, she's loved being on city council ever since I can remember, a total of eight years. Before that, my dad was on council for eight years, so I've kind of been a city council baby. Um, anyhow, Mom, I love you, and I'm so proud of you. You've done a wonderful job, and just know that you're loved, but we're glad to have you back as a family and to spend more time with the grandkids and us. So thank you. I am a lot. Yes. Good evening, Guillermo. Guillermo Serna, 14122, East 102nd Place, Commerce City, Colorado. I saw you all come in, and the city was growing, and the city needed repair. But it's the growth and the foundation that you're leaving behind for this city to grow on, and it's growing, and it's going to keep on growing. But the foundation is there. The children of Commerce City, thank you for the Boys and Girls Club, because without children raised right and in perspective and educated, we cannot be a city. The seniors, thank you for bringing some of their issues up to the forefront. And in perspective, you are leaving something that new city council people can grow with and build on. It's not the end. It's just still the beginning. And I want to thank you for the Boys and Girls Club in perspective and come back when it is completed because it's going to be a good celebration for this whole community as a city because it will not be the first one I'm hoping that it would be just the beginning of possibly a second or third. So thank you very much, and good luck. My name's Phil Baca. I'm the chief of police here in Commerce City, and I live at 15441 East Fairway Drive. Uh, very proud to be a resident, obviously very proud to be the chief of police. Uh, Ms. is helping me on this. Uh, he's handing out four challenge coins. And there are three words at the bottom of it that really exemplify the service you've provided to this city, honor, commitment, and integrity. Uh, I don't give this coin to, any, to very many people. I only give this coin to, I think, uh, that truly deserve the recognition. And I really think that you deserve recognition for the years of service that you've given this community and all the people in this community. And I especially want to thank you for all your support for public safety, for the police department, and the individual officers at work on the street. I know that, you know, you've fielded thousands of calls over the years about what maybe, we, maybe what we have done very, very well and maybe something we have not done well at all. 
Uh, but you always kept an open mind, and you always knew that there were two sides of the story. And whether we were praised in the end or whether we stumbled, uh, you were always there to support us. So uh, please accept this coin. It really is commemorative of the police department, me as the chief of police. It also recognizes the uh, city on the back, the date of its uh, incorporation. It also recognizes our, our new uh, uh, wildlife reserve with the buffalo, the plains, and the mountains. So uh, please uh, hold this coin and accept it uh, as a gift from, uh, from me personally as the chief of police and the police department. And thank you very much for your service. Okay. We made it through. Now all you have to do is your last talk. So we made it through that part. Now, we are going to do a, hopefully, a very short time of real business for the city. And then the uh, five of us will get a chance to do our farewells. Um, and at that point, we will break to the back and have some refreshments. So if somebody just wants to get out of here for a little while, or uh, this would be a good time for a break, because now we're going to do the boring part that is actually the business of the city. Okay, um, tonight there's actually four sets of minutes for tonight. And first of the minutes for the meeting of September 12, 2011, but before voting on the minutes for September 12th, I need a motion to allow Councilman Benson to abstain from voting because of his excused absence. Ms. Snyder. Yes, move to allow Councilman Benson to abstain from the special meeting minutes of September 12, 2011. Mr. McEldowney. Second. I have a motion a second to allow Councilman Benson to abstain from voting on the minutes of September 12th meeting. Is any discussion? Seeing none, uh, request of voice vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same. Motion passes. Now entertain a motion to approve the minutes of September 12th, Mr. Marino. Move to approve the special meeting minutes of September 12, 2011. Ms. Teeter. Second the motion. A motion and a second to approve the minutes of September 12, 2011. If there, is there any discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, request a voice vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same. Motion passes. Next to the minutes of the meeting of September 19, 2011. I'll now entertain a motion to approve those minutes. Ms. Snyder. Move to approve the meeting minutes of September 19th, 2011. Council is seated. Mr. McEldowney. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of September 19th, 2011. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, request a voice vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, the same. Motion passes. Next to the meeting minutes of September 26, 2011, before voting on the minutes of September 26th, I need a motion to allow myself to abstain from voting because of my excused absence, Ms. Teeter. So moved. Ms. Carson. Second. I have a motion and a second to allow me to abstain from voting. Well, um, is there any discussion? Seeing none, I request a voice vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same. Motion passes. Uh, now do a um, motion to uh, approve the minutes of September 26, Mr. Marino. Move to approve the minutes of September 26, 2011. Ms. Snyder. Second the motion. Okay, I've had a motion and a second to approve the minutes of September 26th. Any discussion? Seeing none, request a voice vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, the same. Motion passes. Thank you. Next to the minutes of the meeting, October 3rd, 2011. Before voting on the minutes of October 3rd, need a motion to allow Mayor Pro Tem Snyder and Councilwoman Teeter to abstain from voting because of excused absences. Mr. McEldowney. So moved. Uh, Mr. Diaz. The motion. I have a motion and a second to allow Mayor Pro Tem Snyder and Councilwoman Teeter to abstain from voting. Any discussion? Seeing none, uh, request a voice vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, the same. The motion passes. Now entertain a motion to approve the minutes of October 3rd, 2011. Mr. McEldowney. Move to approve the minutes for October 3rd. Mr. Marino. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of October 3rd. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I would request a voice vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, the same. Motion passes. On to the consent agenda. 
There are two items on the consent agenda this evening. Council is reminded that these items can be removed from the consent agenda for discussion purposes at the request of a council member. Does anyone wish to remove either one of these items from the consent agenda? Okay, good. If not, I'm open to a motion. Ms. Teeter. Yes, move approval of the consent agenda. Mr. McEldowney. Second. Okay, it's been moved and second to approve the consent agenda. Will the city attorney please read the titles? Title of Resolution 2011-67, Resolution Approving 2012 Incentives Program. Next one is Resolution 2011-70, Resolution Approving Charter for Quality Community Initiative. Okay, I've had a motion and a second. City Attorney has read the title. Request a roll call vote, please. Okay, the vote is nine yeses. The consent agenda is approved. Thank you very much. There are two resolutions on the agenda for tonight. They are not included in the consent agenda because they require a separate voice vote. First is resolution 2011-59, a resolution. Oh, actually, there's only one today because we've removed one. So there's only just one resolution, which is 2011-59, uh, a resolution adopting Denver Regional Natural Hazard Mitigation Plan. Is there any discussion or questions by City Council? Seeing none, um, I would welcome a motion. Ms. Teeter. Or I'm sorry, Ms. Snyder. Move approval of resolution 2011-59. Council is seated. Ms. Teeter. Second the motion. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution 2011-59. Is there any further discussion? If not, will the City Attorney please read the title? Title reads, Resolution 2011-59, Resolution Adopting Denver Regional Natural Hazard Mitigation Plan. Okay, I've had a motion and a second. City Attorney's read the title. Request a voice vote, please. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, next item is Council Business. Uh, I have a request to change the time of the November 14th meeting to begin at 5.30, and I'm open to a motion. Mr. McEldowney. So moved. Uh, Ms. Snyder. Second the motion. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Change the time of the November 14th, 2011 meeting. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Bullock, did you have further discussion? Okay. Uh, if there is none, uh, request a voice vote, please. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, the same. Motion passes. Next, there's a request to cancel the meeting of November 28, 2011. I'm open to a motion. Mr. Bullock. Uh, I don't want to make a motion to cancel that meeting because we definitely need that meeting for this council, for the council. Uh, we have already a lot of stuff that's scheduled for it. And it's only scheduled to be canceled because usually they cancel a meeting before Thanksgiving. But we're going to lose two meetings in December and January, so I request that this meeting not be canceled. Okay. Mr. McEldowney, did you want to make a motion? I was prepared to make a motion, but I, was, I would be interested in some additional commentary from Mr. Bullock on... Okay, um, what I would request is if we could get a motion in a second, then we could do discussion, if that's okay. So moved. Okay. Mr. Marino? Second the motion. Okay, I have a motion and a second to cancel the meeting of November 28, 2011, and now open for discussion, Mr. Bullock. Um, it's been a practice in the past to cancel a meeting in December right before Thanksgiving if we were light on uh, items to do. As you uh, will see from your schedule that just came up, uh, on that night of the 28th, if you will all go to your schedules, um, we have um, three ordinances discussing of the Organized event permit, regular uh, entertainment licenses, adoption of the 2009 International Code, and the City of Commerce City Snow and Ice Control Plan on that night. There aren't any other nights, plus we lose the meeting of December 26, which is a Monday, and the Monday afterwards for, for the um, first meeting in January. 
So we are losing two meetings already. So I would like to um, not cancel this meeting because it really isn't necessary. It isn't a fifth Monday. And um, we already have lost, um, we're um, losing time as, uh, anyway, so that's my um, discussion on it. Okay, Mr. Benson. Yes, I'd like to know uh, <clears throat> whose idea was this and why is this being proposed? I agree with Mr. Bullock. Uh, we've got a new council that's going to be convened uh, next week, and uh, I think that these first meetings are going to be very important. But I, how did this get on our agenda in the first place? Who, who proposed this? Anybody know? I don't have any idea, but that's why it comes up as a motion. Mr. Gaylor, did you want to say something? Well, uh, just to mention the council, the uh, November 21 meeting is, is very light, and the thought by the agenda setting committee was that if you chose to adopt this motion, then we would move the business to November 21. So if you look on the work schedule for November 21, you see only one item listed. So I think it's a matter of either of those meetings unless you choose to meet both nights but we do have a light agenda for november 21 as it is okay mr McElnowney. Uh, no further comment I, I uh i mean it's been a practice since i've come on council I, I don't know that it's there's an argument that we can't move those items to the 21st i think that seems to make good sense uh, as far as the the lost meetings in december uh, we obviously missed the meeting for Christmas. Uh, as far as January goes, uh, the only meeting that I see we miss, actually, which meeting do we miss? Because the we've got. The first Monday in January. The second? Yes. The second is scheduled meeting. Because uh, fourth of, uh, the first of uh, January 1st falls on a Sunday. Uh, the holiday is moved to the Monday, and that's been a practice now. I don't know when that got canceled, but that's always been a practice that it's uh, yeah. a Sunday holiday. Yeah, yeah. Just vote. Okay. I, I mean, quite I, frankly, I'm, I'm open to a meeting on the 28th. I mean, it's not a – I agree we need some good yeah. time to meet in advance of our – planning activity come January. Um, I'm looking at the current working agenda, and we see a, a meeting planned for the second, unless that's not uh, suggested. We have a meeting for every other Monday in the month. So um, I'm, I'm completely up for it. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Taylor. Just, yeah, just to make clear, staff is not recommending one thing or the other here. We're just letting you decide what you want. And I, and I have a request. Um, there would be five people who are actually impacted by this meeting, which would still be a quorum for this council. Would it be okay just to take a vote of those five people, they're the only ones that are involved, and let them make the decision? Absolutely. The rest could just abstain from voting then and... Uh, yes. Um, okay. And then to make work. it easy, um, Ms. Bauer, would you just go down the line, and what it is is... Do you want to cancel the meeting or not? So the motion that's on the floor is to cancel the meeting of November 28th, 2011. Start with Mr. Marino. Ms. Bauer, and uh, do not let her call you, but start at your end. Mr. Marino. No. No. I'm sorry, I should have waited my turn. Go ahead. Good idea. <laughs> Mr. Benson. No. Now hold on, you got me screwed up. <laughs> Ms. Carson. Yes, I will be out of town. Okay. So, you, you Mr. Still Mackle, have to, Mr. Ma um, and you still need to do the abstains, just so you have I a can, I can write those down okay, as abstains. Okay, fine. Terrific. Since that was the direction okay. given. Mr. McEldowney. I made the motion. I may as well vote for it. So I'm guessing that's a yes. yes. Thank you. Mr. Bullock. No. Counting it as three to two. That's the vote. Three to two. Three, okay. uh, two yeses, three noes. So the motion. Okay. Thank you. So the, there will be a meeting on November 28th. Thank you. Next item is administrative business. That is not reports. Does anybody have administrative business tonight? 
Seeing none, let's go on to reports. Mr. Gaylor. I, Mr. Mayor, I actually did have one item. You, you were not fast quick. enough. <laughs> Remember what I said about we're going to go through this quickly? Yes, it, it's one brief okay. item, I promise. Um, uh, Councilman McEldowney and I met prior, just prior to this meeting, um, to, uh, the Strategic Planning and Review Committee, and uh, we are recommending that it, uh, if Council desires, um, City Manager Flannery is open to individual exit interviews with individual Council members or in very small group settings. So um, just encourage you to reach out to Mr. Flannery and schedule those uh, while, uh, while he has time left with our city. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Carson, administrative. I'll be quick. Um, I've received numerous calls again from the traffic there at 104th and Bell Creek. Can we take another look at that? Uh, I bet I've gotten four phone calls in a week. Mr. McElhaney, did you no? Did you change your mind? No, I would no. I, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Gaylor. <clears throat> While I'm approaching the podium, I usually speak from my table there, but uh, tonight is a special special night for uh, the outgoing members of this city council, and it's it's a type of, e of evening that's always very difficult. And it means, it means the end of an era. It means that we it's the end of a period of time that involved working together, working closely together to accomplish some very difficult things and important things, positive things on behalf of this city. And I feel that over a period of time, the past few years, we have, have done that. And that's why I say tonight is, is, a, is a rather difficult evening because it is the end of an era, so to speak. So I want to take this opportunity to thank you, Mayor Paul Natal, you, Mayor Pro Tem, Trace, Tracy Snyder, Councilwoman Kathy Teeter, and also Councilman Paul Dias, and I'm going to include former council member uh, Tony Johnson in this uh, thank you because when he departed, I, I didn't take the opportunity or have the opportunity to thank Tony for his efforts uh, that have also been very positive on behalf of the city of Commerce City. I want to say that I enjoyed working with all of you. It's been a real pleasure, and uh, you're, you're certain, certainly you're going to be missed by me, along with most other people in this city, I'm sure. So I want to say good luck to all of you and to hope that you have good fortune in all that you do in the future. And also I want to take this opportunity to, to uh, congratulate Councilman Benson uh, on his recent election. And I look forward to your future efforts on behalf of the City of Commerce City, and I look forward to working with you in the future as we have in the past. So thanks again, and Godspeed. Thank you, sir. Mr. Flannery. <laughs> this is definitely bittersweet. <laughs> well, this is, um, I certainly would like to follow uh, Bob's Bob's lead in addressing you from the podium. I don't I don't think I've ever done this uh, with with this group um, but I wanted to say um, as Mr. Foster mentioned um, leadership is a difficult thing and Taking a stand on an issue or making decisions that are are that involve risk as you all have done um, All of you have done but I'm specifically speaking to those that are departing and mr. Johnson uh, in the back all of you have taken risks in the four and a half years uh, since you've taken office in this, this term. Uh, you've, you've made decisions that were difficult. You've made decisions that were very prosperous for the city. You've built a foundation that is to be built upon in the future by many, many more councils to come and many more staff to come. And I personally have enjoyed getting to know each one of you, and I consider each one of you a friend. 
Um, I don't need to mention specifically, but each one of you I could tell a story about um, <laughs> that probably would get the roar, room roaring laughing. Um, I'd also probably tell stories that might actually make people in the room cry because of the challenges that we've faced. Um, there have been enormous uh, challenges and barriers that we have overcome, and I really want to personally thank you for being there and having that leadership to step forward and lead this community in the right direction. You've lived up to the building that was built here. You've lived up to practicing what you preach, and I think you're a role model for years to come to anybody who wants to come into this chamber. I certainly appreciate the time that I've had with you and congratulate you for the time that you served. People in this community, um, I'm a big metaphor guy. Um, when I played football, I didn't understand um, you know, what, what people didn't understand about the football game. And Mr. Benson might like this one, actually. Um, but when you played football or any sport and you watch it on TV, you have a different understanding of the game. And you actually, if you were a lineman, you watch the line and you understand what kind of calls are going on in that line and the communication that's going on among linemen to block a defensive back or a defensive linebacker or another lineman. The reason I use that metaphor here is because you all, people don't understand what it takes to do this job. People don't understand how much work you actually put in, how much blood, sweat, and tears you put in as individuals to the community for the service of the community. So if this is an opportunity to repeat that or to make that statement clear uh, for everybody to hear, then, then I'm glad to be the one who actually gets to say that to you. And I, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Marino, why don't we start reports with you? Well, um, They've asked uh, those that are remaining on this council to keep our comments brief, so I'll respect um, staff's suggestion. Um, I want to thank uh, Mayor Natal, Mayor Pro Tem, Tracy Snyder, Council Members Teeter, Johnson, and Diaz uh, for your service um, and your friendship. Councilman Diaz, you had big shoes to fill uh, coming into this, and I am um, proud to say that you you, you did what was needed, and uh, proud to call you a friend and colleague. Um, Councilwoman Teeter, there's one thing that I'll always remember, and it was the night of 2009 when I first got elected, and you said, as long as you make your decisions by what your heart tells you, you'll never take a wrong vote. And um, that advice has served me well these past two years, and thank you for that. Thank you, sir. Mr. Benson. Well, I'll keep my report very short, too. I want to thank all the departing members for their service. Thanks a lot. It's been nice being associated with you. It's been nice going on some of the trips with you to D.C., the NLC trip, CML, and uh, good luck to you in the future. Ms. Carson. Uh, thank you to each and every one of you. And, Paul, thank you. Thank you very much for stepping up to the plate and sitting in that chair when we them, called on you and asked for you to do that. You've done a great job. Uh, Mr. Benson, thank you for getting reelected. And, Mr. Mayor, thank you for everything. I know what, how many things you attend in a week, so thank you very much for doing that. Um, and now I'll just speak to the women to my left. And I'm going to try not to get choked up. Thank you. I will truly always appreciate everything that the two of you have done for me. I will miss both of you greatly. Um, you take the history of this city with you. And as a woman, I know how hard it is to set up here uh, to be a mom, to be a wife, to be a grandmother, um, and, and pull it all together. So I want to thank you very much from all the women in the city. Uh, Shirley said it best. Thank you very much. And. Um, it is very difficult setting up here, but I, I will miss you greatly. Um, I just wish we could have passed that ballot measure sooner. Maybe, <laughs> maybe one of you would still be sitting here. So thank you, each and every one of you. Mr. Johnson in the back, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bullock. 
I just want to mirror what all the rest of the council has said. I want to thank the outgoing members of this council. Um, I, um, above all of the people on this council, truly know what you're going through right now because I've gone through it. And I know this isn't an easy night for you. Uh, you came in it with the expectations, well, we will come in and we will say goodbye and everything. You haven't seen nothing yet. Wait till your turn to talk. But thank you so much for all your dedicated service. Thank you. Okay. Mr. McEldowney. I, uh, I want to thank each of you for the relationship that we've developed over the years. Um, it's quite a shock to think about four and a half years having gone by so quickly and the times that we've, uh, we've come through together. Um, it's, been a, it's been a period of time in the city's history that I think few will understand who haven't sat behind the dais in that time. Um, we heard from others earlier about the challenges that the city faced and the successes that the city has managed to, uh, to achieve in that, in that time frame. Um, having been here with you, uh, you have somebody here that knows what it was like. Um, I appreciate the, the lessons that you taught me as an incoming council member. Um, you know, I think back to the words of uh, Orville Lewis when I came in and, you know, the, the early, you know, the, the recommendations for a year one council member to keep your mouth shut and nod and smile a lot, essentially. Um, you encouraged me to not do that and to, uh, to speak my mind. Um, Kathy, I think I got the very same advice from you early on about voting from my heart, keeping family in perspective. Those early lessons have been critical in, in being able to continue to do this job, and I will continue to keep those in mind uh, for the remainder of my time on council. I want to wish you all the very best in your next endeavors. Um, you have done your family and your community proud. Uh, so thank you on behalf of the community for all that you've done. Tony, I said a lot when you uh, first departed, and I, uh, I don't know that I have much to add. I, uh, I do miss you. Uh, I miss being able to lean over and, and talk to you, although Paolo's done a pretty good job of sitting in on your behalf, and, and I have, uh, will, and will certainly miss having you here at my side, Paolo. Um, you've heard from many tonight about uh, the, the, the fine job that you've done and how well you represented this community. Please don't uh, stop serving. Uh, in whatever capacity that might be, this community needs you and people like you. So please thank, please thank, or thank you, and please stick with it. Um, I, I'll I'll cut my uh, my comments there. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Mr. Diaz, you can tell I'm new because I have no speech prepared. I guess I didn't know what this night was supposed to be about. Um, one of the best advices I got when I was first appointed was from Mizram Cordero, when he pretty much told me that. Um, Stay true to myself and just be myself. So whatever words come out of my mouth is completely, absolutely genuine and is just me being myself, um, thanks to Ms. Room Cordero. So um, first and foremost, I do want to thank Anthony Johnson. Um, I was always told when I first began that I had big shoes to fill. And I know I've seen you before and I know how big you are. Um, <laughs> but I also know that that was meant in other ways too. So um, thank you for that. And I do want to thank current city council right now. Um, you guys gave me the opportunity to sit up here, though I knew that it was definitely going to be short-term, um, guaranteed, um, was going to be short-term, but you guys m had a lot of candidates to choose from, a lot of candidates with different backgrounds, people who have lived in Commerce City longer, um, people who are smarter than me, people who are more involved than me, and yet um, you guys did believe in me to um, try to fill Anthony Johnson's shoes, and so I definitely appreciate that opportunity. As Jerry pointed out, I do have a lot of stories that I could probably share with about you guys that will probably make you laugh or cry, um, but I'll try to um, prevent you guys from having to go through that, the embarrassment, just because I'm leaving. I don't want to put some new stuff out there. <laughs> but there are a few people that I do want to thank just off the top of my head. Um, first of all, Mayor Paul Natal. I don't know if you guys know how my involvement with Commerce City began, um, but I remember distinctly it was 2009, and I remember it was the State of the City for Denver. And I remember thinking, should I go to the State of the City for Denver or should I go to this Metro North Chamber Ambassador meeting? And for some reason, I decided to go to the Metro North Chamber Ambassador meeting. And lo and behold, the two people who happened to be speaking at that Ambassador meeting was Mayor Paul Natal and Brittany Morris Saunders, who was just Brittany Morris back then. And sure enough, as I heard them speak so passionately about Commerce City, it was one of those where I knew I really wanted to get involved in the city, besides the fact that I pretty much live there. And so I contacted them both afterwards, ended up setting up a meeting with Mayor Paul Natal, 
I still remember it was at IHOP. The staple thing is it'll always be our IHOP. Um, he bought me pancakes. <laughs> and um, I still remember that he was the one who really got me involved in the cultural council and tried to get me involved in other commissions and boards. And so I definitely want to thank you for that. Um, Jason McEldowney, I did get a chance to really work with him through the Cultural Diversity Summit that um, Ms. Rim Cordero was putting together. Jason and I had actually talked a few times before then because one of my concerns in thinking about running for city council was how am I going to balance my job trying to be on council and campaigning to get on that and then also trying to raise a family. For those who don't know, I have a four-year-old daughter and a one-year-old son. And so Jason having a daughter about the same age, age as mine. Um, I definitely talked to him and he explained to me, yep, it's it's very difficult balance. Um, he shared some tips and techniques with me on not only how to raise that family, but also how to keep your wife happy. Because if the wife isn't happy, then nobody's happy in that house. And, <laughs> and um, so I really got some great advice from him. And, and that was probably one of the most important things that I had to learn um, as I sit here through council. And then obviously, Dominic Moreno, he has been a great friend and a great colleague of mine. He's been very supportive and he's the one that I'd like to point to as the person who got me into this mess. <laughs> For those who don't know how I first became acquainted with Dominic Moreno, it all started when he was running for election back in 2009. And I think I've told you this story two or three times before and probably some of you have heard this before. But I distinctly remember I was sitting in my wife's Honda Civic in the passenger seat. My wife's driving, so I'm sure we were driving to her mom's house for dinner on a Sunday night. And I was reading the um, voter guide, the RIP, the voter guide. And I came across this one guy who looked like he was 12. And I remember looking through that, and I remember pointing to my wife, and I said, hey, babe, check this out. This guy over here grew up in, was born in Commerce City, grew up in Commerce City, went to Georgetown, studied government, now he wants to come back here and basically help out his city. This is a guy that I definitely want to meet, become affiliated with, and hopefully work on some projects with. Apparently, that was a prophetic thought, um, because at that time, I saw myself and Dominic in terms of... Um, that's what I did in Aurora. I grew up in Aurora, and I still keep myself involved in Aurora. Who knew that eventually I would meet Dominic, and then one day we would hit it off, and next thing you know, he's getting me into this mess, I guess is um, how we're referring to it. But I definitely want to thank Dominic for his friendship and for getting me through all this and for helping me out. He's definitely been very, very supportive. And the one thing I always told him was, um, if I screw up on this campaign, I apologize. I still remember the candidate forum, and, and as soon as I saw Dominic walk into the room, I kind of started freaking out because I think Dominic has kind of put himself out there for me, and the last thing I want to do is ruin this great reputation that he's built for himself here in Commerce City. So, um, Dominic, I definitely um, I do want to thank you for that. I also want to thank the residents. As I pointed out, I've only lived in Commerce City for six, seven years now. Um, I do want to thank the residents. You guys have really taken me in and allowed me to serve you guys, and I really appreciate that. Some of you invited me into your homes, which was great. Um, and, you know, some of you have had great conversations with, and I really think that there's some great things that we can do here in Commerce City. Um, to those who voted, whether you voted for me or voted not for me, um, thank you for voting. I do appreciate you guys really stepping up and, and being involved in the city in that capacity and basically pointing out who you thought would be great in leading the city. And I do want to congratulate Crystal Elliott and Stephen Douglas. I've gotten the chance to interact with both of them since the election and offered my congratulations, and we've, we've talked back and forth, and, and they really are great choices. They do have the city's intent, great intent, um, close to their vest. So I'm really excited to see what they can do for the city. So much appreciation to them. And um, I want to thank my family as well. My wife and my kids have been the most supportive thing throughout this whole process. I remember when Dominic first brought up the idea of me running um, back last year. And I think the exact words that came out of, my, out of my wife's mouth when I brought it up to her was, another thing? And, um, yeah, I, I pretty much said, well, who knows? Who knows what will happen with it? And who knows? It, who knew that it would end up being this way? But my wife has, you know, she's pretty much been at home with the kids since June, all by herself, every night for dinner. Um, and I really felt bad because, you know, with two young kids, I think a lot of you who are parents out there know what that's like. And so the good thing is, is um, for my wife, is that now she has that support at home, especially at a time when my son is very clingy towards me. It was really heartwarming when my son woke up from his nap yesterday and he was cranky. Um, I think he wanted to watch the Bronco game, but he was cranky nonetheless. And he didn't want his mom, he wanted me. And so for me, that was kind of a sign that, you know what, this is all probably happening correctly. Especially because after the election, Wednesday morning, I woke up and um, first thing I told my daughter was, I lost. So now we can hang out and do whatever you want to do. I'm home every night, I'm home every weekend. What do you want to do? And she's like, I want to see Puss in Boots this weekend. 
And so sure enough, we were driving to see Puss in Boots this weekend, and um, completely out of nowhere, because it was silent in the car, completely out of nowhere, the first thing the word comes out of her mouth is, Daddy, I'm glad you lost. And I just kind of chuckled, and I'm like, why? And she's like, because now you get to stay at home with me every single night. And that just kind of made me a little bit excited, because for all you parents out there, you know what it's like to be a parent. And, and this is, these are the years that I'll never get back, you know, my daughter being four and my son being one. It was funny, because last night I told her, hey, I got to, you know, I have a meeting tomorrow night. And she's like, that's okay. I know you only have two more meetings, and after that you're done. Um, so my daughter did tell people to vote for me. And, um, but now she's very excited that you guys didn't. So um, I'm sure she'd definitely like to uh, thank you for that. <laughs> and um, last but certainly not least, I definitely want to thank my Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. He gave me this great opportunity, an opportunity that... It... Thank you. Um, he definitely gave me an opportunity that I think a lot of people um, would have relished. And I've got to see a lot of things, and I've got to experience a lot of things. And, I, you know, this was never about me. This was about trying to make Commerce City a lot better for the residents. This was about making a better place for my family to live in, for my family's friends to live in. Um, this was always about that. And this was always about serving the best way that I know how, which is the way that he tells me to serve. And so now I look forward to my next adventure, whatever that may be, definitely taking the next two or three months off um, in terms of trying to reacquaint and get to know my wife again. I'm going to try this whole husband and dad thing and see how well that works out for me. Um, but I know that after t that, I've had a chance to really just kind of rest. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what other cross that my Lord Jesus Christ wants me to bear. So thank you guys for everything, and God bless. Thank you. Ms. Teeter. Well, good evening. I want to thank the winners of the elections um, that took place last week and all the candidates that fought hard in a clean campaign. I want to thank all of you for having the determination to, to run for these positions. Uh, I also want to thank you, Councilman, former Councilman Tony Johnson, for serving with you for eight years. And for you, Mr. Diaz, what a great job you've done. I'm very proud of your hard work and and how quickly that you've learned the business. And don't be discouraged because of this outcome because you have a bright future ahead. I prepared a little speech, and it goes like this. I want to take this opportunity to thank my family and friends for supporting me during the last eight and a half years in City Council. I also want to thank all of my supporters who overwhelmingly voted and elected me for two terms to represent them as their council member at large for the City of Commerce City. I thank them for having trusted me with my decision making on different ordinances and legislative items. This means so much to me. I am proud of the city's accomplishments during my tenure. We expanded one open space, parks and trails for our community to improve health and wellness. We built and ma maintained roadways to improve travel for our residents. And we survived the most worst economic downturn bringing new businesses into Commerce City and nurturing existing businesses so they could succeed. And we're finally getting a King Supers in the northern area. That is just, just wonderful. The future of the city is truly bright, and I look forward to watching the new council expand on our successes and make this a world-class city for all of us who live here. I hope you will indulge me as I offer words of wisdom for our incoming leaders and my colleagues who are continuing to serve. First, please make an effort to reduce the redundancy of decision discussion, I'm sorry, and provide short but informative reports. Secondly, do not go into arguments with each other. I hear often from my constituents who time, <coughs> excuse me, who are tired of these issues. Be mindful of the time and be efficient in conducting the city's business. With our council meetings going so late in the evening, many residents are forced to turn off their televisions and go to bed, unable to participate in the democratic process. Perhaps the most important suggestion I have is the advice shared with, that I shared with you, Mr. Marino, when you first were elected. Always be honest, return phone calls to citizens to remedy their problems, 
and before voting on any ordinance, take the information presented to you and factor into your decision along with what your heart tells you what to do and you will never be wrong. I, I'm glad you remembered that. I would like to thank my fellow council members. It has been a pleasure serving and working with you and seeing what all we have accomplished. I want to thank City Manager Jerry Flannery, Chief Baca, and all the administration and staff for all your dedication and hard work and your professionalism. And if I try to name you all by names, I'll know I'll forget one and then you won't, it just wouldn't be right. Finally, I want to publicly thank my husband, Bill, my daughters, Tracy and Tanya, and my four grandchildren. You're okay. You're fine. <laughs> While I have this, <laughs> I can't even read because of my tears. While I have done this privately, thank you for being patient with my late meetings, my numerous boards and commissions, and putting you last at times. But I love you all very dearly. Now it is time that, now at this time, I have to come first in your life, and you have to be first in mine. Thank you for the honor of allowing me to serve you for this great city. And most importantly, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ for being with me and following me and, and watching over me and helping me with my good decision making. God bless all of you and God bless America. Mr. Johnson, I don't care if you do hide, you're coming up here and you're going to speak from the dais. Come on up, sir, please. Come sit in my chair. Well, I really didn't want to say a lot, and I, I've really enjoyed tonight, and, and um, you know, I've, I've gone through this and how much I appreciate all of you, and I, I, as I've been apart from the community for a time, I, I, miss, uh, I miss this dearly. I never thought I would say that. Um, <laughs> some, uh, I talked to, to Crystal a little bit ago, and she said she's running for council. She ran for council. I said I ran away. I ran away from council. But uh, life has been good, and we're getting excited about some of the things that God is opening up for us uh, in the near future. We hope. But um, I, again, I just want to reiterate that uh, the, this community is very, very fortunate. Um, it has an incredible tax base, and it has an incredible base of awesome people. I've ministered in, in this community for 25 years as a pastor, and I've seen the heart of this community uh, over and over again. And, and it is an, a privilege uh, to serve this community in any way you can. Um, serving on a council is, is a, a tedious thing, uh, because no matter what decision you make, uh, you pretty well know you're going to tick off half the people in the city. But... Uh, it is so fulfilling uh, to see the things that happen. I was thinking back the other day uh, that uh, we saw Quebec Street get built, uh, Quebec Parkway, excuse me. We've seen this beautiful building get built. Uh, we've seen our police department become one of the finest departments in the United States. Uh, we've got a city manager that, and his staff that are next to none. And we've got uh, uh, nine people who lead this city, who lead it with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their might. Um, I don't agree with much uh, they do, <laughs> some of them, and that's okay. But I know that every one of these people, in, in, in what they say and what they do, they're doing what they think is the very best for this community. And as long as we have that, we are going to move forward. And I, I, I couldn't tell you... Uh, I can't sit here and tell you if you can do anything better or if I would do anything better. But what I can tell you is we've done the best we can do 
with what we've had, and we've enjoyed every moment of it, every tear, every lonesome moment sometimes, and uh, we've done it together. And uh, I am very, very proud of this council, and I'm very, very proud of this community. And uh, like I say, I am super honored uh, to have been a part of it for so long. I've been in this community since 1952, and uh, that's more than 10 years, if you're trying to count. And uh, I love this place. And uh, I, I, I live where I live because it's the only place that offers the amenities that I was looking for. And, and if there was something like that in Commerce City here, I'd be there in a minute because this is a great community. And what makes it a great community is the people who live here are real, honest, hardworking folks. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Snyder. Okay. First of all, I would like to start by thanking my Lord Jesus Christ for his guidance and wisdom I have relied so heavily on. When you do this job, you pray a lot. You want to make the best decisions that you can, and you really do lean on him for his guidance. And so he's the first one I'd like to thank. As I sat down earlier today thinking about the last almost nine years I've been on council, I was amazed at all that I have to be thankful for. I would like to thank my family, my father, Woody Snyder, my mother, Carol Snyder, my daughter, Natasha, and my son, Nathan. Thank you for seeing me through the tough campaigns, the long hours away, and the crazy schedules. You are the best family anyone could ask for, and I love you dearly. To Draven and Isaiah, I love you to the moon and stars and back. To my best friend and the best campaign manager ever, Darla Hamilton, you have given me the gift of friendship since we were little girls. That is something I could never repay. You will always be the captain of my ship. To Mike Norman, Tom and Janet Kesey, and Phyllis and Manuel Mascarenas, I thank you for the years of friendship and support. I have been blessed with so many friends, neighbors, and citizens that have given me their unwavering support. For that, I cannot thank you all enough. Thank you to our wonderful staff and to the departments that work so hard to make our city a better place to live. Thank you to the amazing people of Commerce City, her children, working families, and seniors. I thank you for allowing me to work for you and for believing in me. Everything that has been done is all because of you. Much has been accomplished in the last decade. We have seen new communities and subdivisions spring up thanks to the people of Commerce City who voted to allow us to move ahead with the project of redevelop I'm sorry, with the project of developing the Northern Range. We have a world-class soccer stadium and we are now the home of the world champion Colorado Rapids. I urge the new council to continue to let the world know that this team is in our backyard. Together we built the new Civic Center and a new and bigger Salud Medical Clinic to serve our underinsured and uninsured citizens and children. The clinic not only provides medical care but dental as well. We now have a historical society that has done an outstanding job of gathering and writing our history. We were able to complete Pioneer Park in the south and complete 104th Avenue in the north. Thank you for helping us push as hard as we could for both King Superstores in the south and in the north. Nothing made me happier than to bring the news that we had finally closed the deal to bring a grocery store to the northern range. I was, for, I was the first person to ever serve on the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce representing Commerce City. We have become involved in a local, national, and even international level. We are at the table now. Our time has come. I have seen miracles happen the deletion of the 917 acres and the creation and implementation of the Prairie Gateway and the National Wildlife Refuge and Visitor Center was a moment in time that I will never forget, just as was the moment when the bison ran off the trailers and returned to their native lands. These are just some of the many accomplishments we have all worked hard together to bring to Commerce City, but there is still much to be done. Derby has started its renovation, but we must keep the work going. We must continue to de develop the Northern Range, bringing parks and recreational activities to the children. We must continue to work to build the Boys and Girls Club, which is near and dear to my heart. 
I was honored to be on the council who gave the school district and la the land to build the new Adams City High School. I believe the children are our future, and we must find a way to support education in both, both of our school districts, 14 and 27J. I want to thank all of the past councils and mayors that have served Commerce City. I want to thank Mayor Natal for giving me op the opportunity to be your Mayor Pro Tem. I have been honored to serve on the Policy Committee for the State and the Pu Public Safety Steering Committee for the National League of Cities. I want to thank our seniors. You have always been my inspiration. Your spirit and encouragement will be with me all of the days of my life. Jean Klein, Lois Kimmis, Mary Arnold, Joe Gillis, Lopa Tafuli, Tom Martin, and Bar Bobby Crawl. You are gone, but will remain with us forever. I promised Eugene, Lois, and Bobby that I would keep going and never give up. To Mr. Milam, Mr. Rarick, and Mr. Cook, thank you for the gift of teaching me what it means to be a public servant and a good citizen. You are amazing teachers, and I have been blessed to know you and be taught by you. To Tony and Dottie Johnson, thank you for your service to the community and for guiding me in my very youngest of days. As many of you know, two years ago I had an accident that nearly took my life. During my darkest hours, 31 days in the hospital and a stint at Spalding Rehab Center, you were all there for me. The flowers, cards, visits, meals, and prayers brought me to tears of joy to be living in a community that loves one another so much. There are not words to say thank you for all that you did for me during my long recovery. With that, I will again thank the people of Commerce City for the opportunity to serve you. I would be most honored to continue to do so and would love to have your continued support. I love you all. Thank you. Wow. This, this is really a tough act to follow. And like Mr. Diaz and Mr. Johnson, I didn't even take any notes. I've been just kind of writing notes here. Um, I can't believe how time went by so fast. What we have accomplished in the last seven or eight years will never be able to be copied again. Uh, we were in the worst economic times this country has seen, and this council has taken this city through it. I am just so proud to have been part of this. Um, before I do anything, because I'm always forgetting her, because she's been my anchor, my wife, Who thought it would be me? <laughs> um, and my family. My son is here, my grandkids, my daughter-in-law is outside trying to keep the noise down uh, from the little ones. But uh, I just remember being here uh, even before I was on council and um, a wise person told me that Commerce City was really the best kept secret in the whole Denver metro area. And I just want to reach out to that person and say, guess what? We are not that secret anymore. We have developed a reputation, not only in this Denver metro area, but in the state, in the nation, and even on a world level. We are doing things in this city that people would never have expected. Uh, seven or eight years ago. It would have never happened had we not gelled the way we did. Um, there's no way that I can thank you enough. Uh, Mr. Diaz, um, we're going to be working together anyway in junior achievement, so we'll be seeing each other probably more than we are now. Uh, you were a wonderful choice. I'm glad that you were, had the chance to sit here. Um, and. You, you'll be around much longer. We know we'll see your face. Ms. Teeter, I don't know how to thank you enough. Uh, you've been a steadying, steadying person on this, on this uh, board, and, and you've always been there when you needed to be there. And you did relate with everybody, even some of the people that I had a small challenge with relating with. Um, I wasn't really known for being the most cooperative at times. Mr. Johnson, there's no way I'm going to be able to thank you enough. Um, your background, and I, I don't want to say your religion, but you took me some, through some really hard times um, as far as relating with God and, and his son. And it was your steady 
position that uh, got me back on the straight and narrow again, and there's no way I could thank you. Ms. Snyder, you have been my rock, and you have done wonderful things for the city. Um, there's no way that I could ever thank you for all you've done. You have stood in even with, with your health problems when I had a few myself, and you just jumped in with both feet, and you never backed away from anything. Um, you have been terrific. Your future is going to be whatever you want to make it. Um, I don't know how to thank the five of you more than what I've done. Um, I'm not, you know, I know you find this hard to believe, but I really have trouble with words at this particular point. Um, I want to thank all the people who ran. Please remember there's another election in two years. We had some absolutely phenomenal people run in this election, and I am so proud of every last one of you. And I know we're going to see you again. Stay involved in the city. <coughs> this is a phenomenal city. Um, we have done such wonderful things these past two. Mr. McEldowney, you are another wonderful pick. Um, I'm so proud of you. Um, and, uh, you know, I know you're going to do great. Mr. Marino, <laughs> who would have ever thought that the two of us being at such different levels of that R&D scale that we'd even be able to talk? But we're more alike than we're different. And I, I want to thank you really because you showed me that that's possible. You could still have different political sides, but you'd still be able to talk. So uh, thank you very much. Um, Mr. Bullock and, and, <laughs> and Mr. Benson, there's nothing I can say to either one of you. Um, uh, Ms. Carson, I want to thank you. You, even though we have differed at times, you have always spoken your heart, and that's what's important. Um, I don't have to like it. Mr. Johnson said the same thing. I may not have to agree with you, but I never got the feeling you were doing anything other than what you truly believed in. You need to continue to do that. Staff, we have the most wonderful staff in the entire metro area. Um, I don't know how we got so lucky. It just seemed like every time a position came open, this wonderful person appeared, started with Mr. Flannery and continued from there. Uh, Mr. Gaylor, uh, there's no way, I mean, you've been the heart of this city. You have been everything that we've needed. Um, you've been the backbone and the heart. Uh, thank you for that. Mr. Flannery, um, like I said when you came up, this is really bittersweet because we're leaving, but you're also going on to another chapter in your life. I'm glad to have known you. I think we did the absolute best bringing you here. You have brought a staff that is second to none. Um, thank you so much. Mr. Aker, we've gone from just working little tiny projects to running the city. Um, you have just blossomed um, in the last four and a half years. Thank you. Mr. McBroom, you're going to do wonderful. I, again, I don't know how we keep getting these people. Um, Chief, I knew you were great from before because I knew of your reputation, so I knew when you got here everything was going to be great. Brittany, man, I don't, there's probably nobody better out there. It's so weird because I know the city, as citizens, you probably don't realize this, but when a Commerce City staff person is in any group anywhere in this metro area, they're the leader in the group. People go to them for what should we do next. It's crazy, but it's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Um, Parks and Rec, Carolyn, I, you know, you've always been in my heart. Um, your staff has been wonderful. Um, 
Yeah, Greg. I don't know how you do it, but you keep plugging away and keeping everything going. IT, uh, I don't know what you're going to do now. You're going to have to find somebody else that says we want more stuff. <laughs> you know, I know that was my part, but I'm sure somebody will take up, either Mr. Marino or Mr. McEldowney will start saying we need new stuff, new, new stuff. Uh, Ms., you've been terrific, absolutely terrific. Um, thank you all. I know I'm going to miss a gazillion people. Laura, there's, I, you've been, how do we keep finding all these great people and we find them no place close to us? You know? I mean, you were on the other side of Sheridan. I mean, nobody goes over that far west. <laughs> thank you. Thank, I mean, everybody, and I know I'm missing people, but please know that you've all been great. Um, and we did it. I'm the only one that cried. I'm really disappointed. <laughs> Um, the people sitting out in the audience, there's not enough I can say. Stay involved. Keep your eyes open. You all are great. I love you all. Silers, I know we're going to have more lunches. Thomas's. Um, you know, I don't know what else to say. I'm kind of at the end, and it's probably time to go eat some. Huh. So, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, Before I that gavel comes down for the last time. Uh oh, I'm sorry. There's stuff to be given out. We, we do want to invite the outgoing council Five members to come down. We'll go out. Who did I forget? I know I forgot. You all did great. I, I, I need to follow you all. Could you guys go up on the top? That way people can see. Yeah, yeah. So on behalf of the city, we would like to thank our outgoing elected officials for their years of service and acknowledge their contribution with a small token that each will be presented. And then after we do this, Mr. Mayor, you can adjourn. Okay. And then um, I'd invite everyone to join us in the lobby for some refreshments. So go for it.
And uh, though this really isn't my last official act, since I will call a meeting and close a meeting next week, um, this really is the last meeting for the five of us who are leaving. And uh, just as an explanation, because Mr. Foster had to make a big deal over this, um, being on Metro Mayors, I got to work with uh, Governor, now, well now Governor Hickenlooper, but at the time that he ran for election, he says if he was to become governor, that he was not going to wear a tie anymore. And part of the reason was that we wanted to be more welcoming and we wanted to show people we were more comfortable with bringing business here to Colorado. Once he said that, it just, I said, okay, I'm getting rid of all my ties. So that's why uh, I have not worn a tie since he uh, actually got elected. And um, again, another Democrat. I don't understand why I like those people. Um, you know, being, being kind of a Republican, um, you know, you got to follow the lead of the other guys when they do something right, because it doesn't happen that often. But anyway, if there be no further business to come before this council, we will be adjourned, and we have food and drinks in the lobby. Is that right? And in Mr. the lobby. And Mr. Natalin, Snyder, I have some documents for you, you to sign before you You got it. We'll be right off. there. I'll be right there. Are you going to come up? Oh, okay. <laughs>